the evidence that we're in a garden. And in the garden, a new tomb. A new tomb in which no one had yet been laid. You guys saw the tomb just now, didn't you? You saw it was a new tomb. You saw that on the left side, how it was cut out at the end, at the foot, so it was lengthened. So we know that this tomb was not originally meant for its occupants. That there were some modifications that were made last minute to this tomb for a new person to lie there. So there they laid Jesus because of the Jews' preparation day for the tomb was nearby. Sabbath, they, were, they were approaching the Sabbath, and coming the Sabbath, Jesus was hanging on the cross at Mount Golgotha. They had to take him down, they had to bury him before the Sabbath came. They had to find a tomb that was nearby. It's amazing that there's a tomb that's nearby. Now the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb early, while it was still dark. You know, when Jesus rose from the dead, he rose at your darkest moment. He saw that the stone had been taken away from the tomb. You know, we know that there was a rolling stone that was placed outside the tomb, right? Do you realize, no, well, first of all, you realize that that stone is not there? When I came the last time, I liked what the guy said. said they rolled the stone away and they couldn't find it anymore. When Jesus rose from the dead, the stone was rolled away. Every judgment, every condemnation, every doubt, every fear, every curse is rolled away at the resurrection of Jesus Christ. There is therefore now no more condemnation for those who are inside Jesus. I like that. You know, inside the tomb we saw, remember, I want to bring you back, remember at the beginning of our trip when we were at Megiddo? Remember I showed you guys the manger? You see now what I was showing you, the manger, the similarities cut out from stone, hewn out from stone, where, a, where the baby, when he was born, baby Jesus, he was laying in that manger. He was born to die. He's the only one who was born to die so that you and I might live. Because of his death, his burial, his resurrection, we now have life and life more abundantly because of what Jesus has done. He's the only one who was born to die. When he, he, wrote, when he, was, he was crucified on the cross of Calvary, when he was buried here in the grave, when he rose again, he fulfilled what God had sent him to do, to redeem, to purchase, to buy back you and me. And then, you know, later if we skip down in the book of John, it says that there were two angels that appeared in the tomb. When Mary was there, two angels appeared, and one sat at the feet, at the head. Anybody know what that's a picture of? The Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant. You see the body of Jesus lying in the center, one angel at his, at his head, the other angel at his feet, Jesus in between. He is our true Ark. He is, the, uh, he is the mercy seat. His blood was laying on the mercy seat. And now there is forgiveness for every sin. There is no more judgment, no more condemnation. The stone has been rolled away. The law has been rolled away. The weight, the burden of sin, the burden of the law has been removed far from us. It says our sin has been removed as far as the east is from the west. As far as the east is from the west, there is no more sin, there is no more judgment, there is no more condemnation, there is no more guilt, there is no more shame because of what Jesus has done for us. That stone has been rolled away. And then, you know, it says that Jesus, in the book of Romans, in Romans chapter 4, 25, it says that Jesus was crucified for our sins. He died for our sins. But he was raised for our righteousness, for our justification. When Jesus died on the cross, you know, he hung on the cross from morning till night. The wrath of God was poured out upon him. The judgment of God was poured out upon him. The fire of God was poured out upon him. Every curse, every punishment, every sickness, every sin was placed on his body at the cross. And at the end of it, in the evening, he said, It is finished. At the cross of Calvary, the work was finished. 
He completely absorbed every judgment, every condemnation, every guilt, every curse. He completely absorbed it in His body at the cross of Calvary. Absolutely 100%. And the Romans couldn't kill Him, the Jews couldn't kill Him. He laid down His life. Because it says that He then, when the work was finished, He dismissed His spirit. You know why Jesus was raised from the dead? You know why he was raised from the dead? He's this this is our receipt. You know, yesterday who was it? I was bought what, five pairs of boots, right? <laughs> <laughs> but let's say that I come up to her and I say, Iris, that pair of boots that you bought last night, those are my boots. Those aren't your boots. Give them me. Now, what do you think? You think she's just gonna go, oh, is it? Oh sorry. Oh, here you go. I didn't know. I didn't realize. You think she's going to do that? How many of you guys think she's going to? I don't think she's going to do that. <laughs> I don't think she's going to do that. She's going to take out what? Her receipt. And she's going to say, no, those aren't your boots. Those are my boots. You see, I have this receipt. And she didn't even have to pay for the boots. Don paid for the boots. But she has the receipt, because Dawn gave her the receipt. <laughs> she has the, the receipt. And so what, what is she going to do? She's going to say, no, those aren't your boots. You know, and these are nice boots. They look good on her. They fit her just perfectly. They're comfortable. They're the most comfortable boots in the world. When she wears these, feels like a queen. She looks like a queen. It's like she's walking on air. I mean, these boots are amazing boots. They were made for walking. <laughs> She's not going to let me take those boots, is she? She's going to take out that receipt. She's going to say, no. Those aren't your boots. They're my boots. I've got the receipt. Don paid for them. But I've got the receipt. You can't have them. You can't take them from me. They're mine. And you know, sometimes the devil comes to you and he tries to steal your boots. He tries to steal your blessing. He tries to steal your health. He tries to steal your prosperity, your provision. He tries to steal your peace. He tries to steal your joy. But let me tell you something. We've got to receive. We can't have those boots. And this empty tomb is our receipt. All that Jesus has done for you. The price that he paid for you. The curse that he removed from you. You know, it says that if Jesus is not raised, then our faith is futile. In uh, 1 Corinthians 15, I think. It says, if Jesus was not raised, our faith is futile. It's worthless. It's nothing. But let me tell you guys something. Our, your faith is not your God. He is risen. He is alive. He is living in right now. Right now. Interceding on your behalf. He's obtained, He's paid for every promise, every blessing, every joy, every of your peace, your provision. Every time the devil tries to become a great condemnation, doubt, fear, worry, sickness, disease, poverty, lack, confusion, any curse, barrenness, whatever it is, lack of fruitfulness in any area of your life, say no. I've got the receipt. Jesus paid for it at the cross of Calvary, and his resurrection testified that it is so is mine. Amen. Hallelujah. So right now, we want to ask Paul, why don't we just stand right now?